Welcome back. We are at it again for more LSAT games. Today I am doing a request that I saw on Reddit. Now, it was not requested of me specifically, but it was posted on the Reddit LSAT board, and so Matthew Deggs, this is for you. I hope this is helpful. This is the third game of Prep Test 57, the dinosaur game. As we're going to read right now, you're going to see this is a two-dimensional in-and-out game, so kind of a hybrid game, probably going to be a little bit tougher, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Each of seven toy dinosaurs Dinosaurs. And let's get our list of elements down right away. I L P S T I L P S T and what else? U and V. U and V. Seven dinosaurs is completely colored either green, mauve, red, or yellow. G M R or Y. A display is to consist entirely of exactly five of these toys. So you're either displayed or you're not. So that's where the in and out part is coming from. And the colored part is going to be the two dimensionality. We are tracking both the color of these dinosaurs and whether they're in the display or not. So I'm going to set this up as a classic in and out game, inside, outside. And they have specifically told me five of the dinosaurs are in. So I'm going to have five spaces on the inside and two spaces on the outside. Outside. That is nice. In and out games don't always give us an exact number of items to look for either in or out, so that should lead to some good deductions. The display must meet the following specifications. Let's go ahead and symbolize some clues. Exactly two mauve toys are included, so very nice. We can go ahead and put mauve, mauve, two on the inside. The stegosaur is red and is included. All right, very nice. So we always know S is in and that S is red, so that takes care of another slot on the inside. The Iguandon is included only if it is green. Okay, interesting. If we see it in, then we know that it's green. So remember, only if clues, you actually symbolize a little bit differently. Basically, only if is the arrow. If we see I is included, then it must be green. That's what it means to say the Iguanodon is included only if it's green. I normally wait to make my deductions except for contrapositives. So I'm going to do this contrapositive right away. If I is not green, then we we can say for sure I is not included. The pterosaur is included only if it is yellow. So exactly the same thing. P, if it's in, must be yellow. And the contrapositive, if P is not yellow, then for sure we know P is not in. The Velociraptor is included only if the Ultrasaur is not. So again, what this means is that if we see the Velociraptor, then we know the Ultrasaur is out. And so we're going to symbolize that if V is in, U is out. And again, we'll immediately do the contrapositive. If U is in, V is out. Anytime we have a clue that starts positively and ends negatively, that's also going to lead us to what we call a placeholder. But that's a deduction. We'll do that in a second. Let's symbolize this last clue. If both the Lamiosaur and the Ultrasaur are included, at least one of them is not mauve. That's going to be a little bit harder to symbolize. It's an and clue. So basically, if we see L and U on the inside, we know one of them is not mauve. So I guess what I'll say is it cannot be L, M, U, M. So that's not possible. On the other hand, if for whatever reason we notice both L and U are mauve, then that would tell us for sure that either L is out or U is out, but they can't both be in. All right, running a little short on space here, so let's magically make all those symbols smaller now. And since that was our last clue, yeah, let's go ahead and talk deductions. Now, again, on an in and out game, you want to be careful about trying to link too many of these conditional statements. Any kind of links that would happen with these conditional statements will happen naturally if that scenario comes up anyway. And so it's kind of a waste of time to try and chain together too many any of these. But placeholders, you always want to look for. Again, a placeholder is when the clue either starts positively and ends negatively, or starts negatively and ends positively. And the basic idea is this. If V is in, U is out. If U is in, V is out. That means for sure, one of them must be out. There's no way that they're both in, because as soon as one of them is in, the other one has to go out. Now, you always want to be careful here. The placeholder does not mean that they can't both be out. They could both be out. But again, what we know for sure is that one of them is out. So I'm going to put that right on this side, either U or V for sure has to occupy one of those two spaces on the outside of our diagram. I don't see any other placeholders though, and I'm not seeing any particularly obvious deductions. You know, there may be something going on with these two mauve spaces and 
L and U there. But at this point, I feel pretty good. Again, if we're missing a deduction, deductions are simply natural consequences of the rules. So it will come up as we go. I think it's time to jump into the questions. We do get number 12, the in and out style pick a clue. So if a game has a pick a clue style question, it's usually the first question. And it usually says something like, what's a complete and accurate list of all the elements? But for an in and out game, sometimes what they'll do is they'll give us just the inside. Now that's what's happening here. Which of the following could be the toys in the display? But of course, everything they give us must be in, which means anything they don't give us must be out. And so I can also quickly keep track of any of the elements that are on the outside. So for example, in A, if L, P, S, U, and V are on the inside, then that means I and T are on the outside. Or with B, if L, P, S, T, and U are on the inside, then I and V are on the outside, and so on. And so sometimes it's helpful to just quickly jot those down. So we're also thinking about who must be out. I, L, P, S, and U means that T and V are on the outside. I, L, P, T, and V means that S and U are on the outside. And then I, L, S, U, V means that T and P are on the outside. Now here's why this matters. I have this placeholder over here that's telling me for sure one of U or V has to be out. So any of these answer choices I'm looking at that don't have one of U or V on the outside must be wrong. So I can see A is no good and I can see E is no good because they don't have at least one of U and V on the outside. Now I just wanna go through the other clues. That's why we call this a pick a clue. Exactly two mauve toys are included. Again, maybe we're gonna have an interaction there with L and U. I'm not totally sure. But for example, we know the stegosaurus is always in or stegosaur, I guess. And so for sure, D is a problem because it doesn't have the stegosaur on the inside. So really we're just down to B versus C. So I don't normally like to do this with a pick a clue question, this first question in the game, but I think we just have to actually work out B or C and let's see which one is possible. So let's start with B, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and let's put L, P, S, T and U on the inside. And again, that means that I and V have to go on the outside. We know for sure that the stegosaur is red, so we can also fill that in. And then what are some other things we can say? If I is in, it's supposed to be green, but I isn't in here, so that doesn't seem like a problem. L and U are both in, so they can't both be mauve, but one of them could be mauve. If P is in, it's supposed to be yellow, so we can fill that out for sure. And we do know that we need two mauve, but at this at this point, we're just trying to make it work. So if I put like L is mauve, T is mauve, and I let U be, I don't really think it matters, green, for example. It seems to me like that scenario is okay. And so I think that this should be answer choice B. Now, one of the key things you wanna do to speed up is to not check every single answer choice. All they're asking me here is what could be true. So if I've tried out B and it could be true, that's the answer. If I had tried out B and something had gone wrong, C would have been the answer. So that was the beauty of getting this one down to two answer choices. Again, on this first question, I don't normally like to plug in answer choices, but among the seven of questions where we would have to plug in answer choices, being able to get it down to two and then just trying one of them out is kind of your best case scenario. But avoid the temptation right now to figure out why C is wrong. There must be something wrong with it. With that pick a clue question done, it's time to jump into the specific questions. These are of course those questions that begin with if or suppose and they give us new information about the game that we can just try out. Number 13 looks like a good candidate. If the Tyrannosaur, why doesn't it say Tyrannosaurus? That's so annoying to me. Am I wrong about the names of the dinosaurs? Have I been saying them wrong my whole life? If the Tyrannosaur is not included in the display, then the display must contain each of the following except. Interesting, so it looks like this is a could be false. It must be true except. That's the opposite of a must be true. So we're looking for which of these could be false, which of them might not be included if we put the Tyrannosaur in. So of course we bring down on all of our spaces and then we always want to bring down the Stegosaur. Stegosaur is in for sure and then the Tyrannosaur is out for sure. Well one thing this does right away is it tells us we're not going to have both of U and V out. So one of them has to be on the outside, but the other one is gonna have to go on the inside. This means a few of the elements we know for sure. So I is gonna have to be in, and we've already said that if I is in, it's green. P is gonna have to be in, 
and if P is in, it's yellow. And so that means that these two elements here have to be mauve. Now something interesting is about to happen. If I have both of those remaining slots mauve, obviously L is taking up one of them, and so this is gonna activate this LU clue. If both L and U were in right now, they would have to be mauve, but that's not allowed. So in fact, this is gonna have to be V on the inside, and you on the outside. So is the green iguanodon in? Yes, cross off A. Is a mauve velociraptor in? Yes, cross off B. Mauve lamiosaur? Yes. Mauve ultrasaur? No. The ultrasaur is on the outside, and so D is the best choice here. 14 starts with which, so 14 is a general question. We're gonna save that for later. 15, if the display includes a yellow tyrannosaur, which of the following must be true? So again, we're gonna go into our scenario here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. And in this case, for sure, we have a yellow tyrannosaur. We know we have to have two more dinosaurs that are mauve, so I'm gonna put the M's on the inside there. And one thing I can see that this means is between I and P, I'm only gonna have room for one of them. Because remember, maybe this even rises to the level of a deduction. If I and P are in, we know their colors and they're not mauve. So I and P can never go in these mauve spots. I also know it can't be both of them because one of U or V has to be on the outside. If I put both I and P on the outside right now, I wouldn't have room for U and V, that placeholder on the outside. So I'm gonna set this up as a coin flip. Either I or P, one of them goes on the inside. If it's I, it's green. If it's P, it's yellow. And then the other one is gonna go on the outside. As far as its color, I don't think we know their colors if they're on the outside. And then the other one is gonna be U, V, and so one of those has to be mauve. And again, we're running into that same problem from a second ago. That means the only other dinosaur that can be in is L. But if that's the case, then that means that we can't have U as the other dinosaur in because then they would both be mauve and that's not possible. So that has to be V and mauve. And then here on the outside, that would have to be U. At this point, I think we have enough to answer our must be true. Uh, the Iguanodon is included. Nope, that's part of the coin flip. So it's not gonna be A. The Platyosaur is not included. That's part of the coin flip, could be, not a must be. The display includes two yellow toy di dinosaurs. Again, that's a could be. I could have two yellows, but it does not must be. It is not a must be true. The display contains a green lamiosaur. Uh, no, it's a mauve lamiosaur. And so just by process of elimination, number 15 has to be E. And again, resist the temptation to check. It looks like we have two more specific questions and then we'll finish up with the general question, number 14. Let's go ahead and do number 16 next. If both if both the Iguanodon and the Ultrasaur are included in the display, then the display must contain which of the following. In this case, we're also going to include the Iguanodon, and of course we know when that happens that it has to be green, so I'm going to put that there. And then we're also supposed to include the Ultrasaur. Now the Ultrasaur could be mauve, could be a different color, we're not really sure. What we do know is that if the Ultrasaur is in, V is out for sure. And then after that, of course I want to avoid L also being in, if both U and L are mauve, but beyond that I'm not really seeing, I think we could have the Tyrannosaur in, I think we could have the Platyosaur in and yellow. Now unfortunately, I think maybe there's a deduction we're missing or something because they keep asking us must be true questions and it doesn't quite feel to me like we have enough to answer a must be true. I'm not really seeing what else has to go in or out right now. And so probably what I'm gonna try is just to go through the answers one at a time and do the opposite of what the answer says. If I'm successful, obviously it's not a must be true, but if something happens where I can't make the opposite of that answer choice work, well then that must be true. So for example, A here, a mauve tyrannosaur, they say it must be in. Well, let's try to put the Tyrannosaur out and see what happens. Obviously the two remaining dinosaurs are P and L, mm, and I can see a problem, and it is related to this LU clue again. P of course, if it's in, has to be yellow, but I have to account for the two mauve dinosaurs, and so if I try and put that Tyrannosaur out, it's not gonna work. And so that tells me for sure the Tyrannosaur has to be in. Now, if there was more than one answer choice here with Tyrannosaur, I would have to figure out what color it is. But because there's only one answer with Tyrannosaur, 16 has to be A. So this game has been a little time consuming at this point. We've only got two more questions though, one specific, one general. This probably is just one of the tougher games in this section. I haven't worked the other games of this section yet, so I don't know for sure. But of course, sometimes the games just genuinely are harder. As someone who's watching YouTube videos to prepare to take this 
this test, that's actually a good thing for you. Yes, you might miss a few more questions than normal, but some person who's not really prepared for the test is gonna miss way more questions than normal. So harder games are actually better for you, as frustrating as that might still feel in the moment. Let's finish this up. Number 17, if the display includes two green toys, which one of the following could be true? Kind of run out of room, so I guess I'm just gonna bring this one over here. We always have our red stegosaur, and in this case, they're telling us to include two green toys, and of course the other two toys have to be mauve. So now we know all the colors. Now what I want to be careful about, I don't think I have to assume one of those green toys is I. That's clearly possible, but I don't know that it has to be that way. I definitely don't want to think it because of the conditional statement. The conditional statement doesn't go that direction. I can't go backwards on the arrow. Of course, we can't have both I and P out, so one of them has to be in. Ooh, and if P is in, it's yellow. But there are no yellow toys here, and so we can say for sure P is on the outside. And then U, V, our coin flip, has to be the other thing. So V, U have to go somewhere on the inside, though I don't know what color they have to be. Of course, this means I is in now, so we can say for sure I is the other green toy. And that also means that L and T have to be on the inside. Well, the only thing I have to avoid right now is I can't have both L and U being those mauve ones. And so whatever arrangement I want to do with L, T, and either V or U, just so long as I don't make L and U both mauve, I should be good to go. So let's see, what could be true? There is exactly one yellow toy included in the display display? Well, no, that's too many colors, that's no good. The Tyrannosaur is included in the display, and it's green. Well, it is in the display, could it be green? If it were L, V, who were mauve, and then T is green, yeah, I think that's it, and so 17 should be B. Finally, the only general question here, which one of the following is a pair of toys that could be included in the display together? We've got a lot of scenarios worked out here, hopefully we will have seen one of these already. Green L and mauve V. Do we ever see green L and mauve V? Well, I feel like that could have worked right away on 17, right? We could have had L in this spot here, V and T in this spot, and then U would be the thing on the outside. So L, G, V, M, L, G, V, M. Yeah, I think 14 is A. And again, that's really going to help us save time not checking these other answers. Might it occasionally mean we get one of those wrong? Yes, but you're buying yourself so much extra time that the trade-off would be worth it even if we do occasionally miss one of these by not checking the other answers. All right, let's see what we got. B, D, A, E, A, B, Badeab. Badeab, B, D, A, E, A, B. We did it. We got them all right. That's nice. So what would I say about this game overall? I would be very surprised if this is not one of the two hardest games in this section, so for sure I would not try to work this as the first or the second game. Obviously the hybrid aspect makes it a little bit complicated. We're not only doing the in and out task, we're also trying to figure out what color the dinosaurs are. And then something you may want to watch out for in the future, all or nearly all of those specific questions were must be true or must be true related. 13 was a must be true except, 15 and 16 were both must be true trues. Only 17 was a could be true. And so on a game where you have that many must be true questions, maybe it would have been worth it spending a little more time up front thinking about deductions. That IP deduction could have come in handy a little bit earlier. But again, you want to be careful. You don't want to be spending too much time looking for deductions. Deductions don't get you points. And deductions are natural consequences of the rules. So as long as you're following the rules, you're not going to miss anything. It might take you a little bit more time, but you're not going to get anything wrong. All right, Matthew Deggs, I hope out there in Reddit world, LSAT online world, this game finds you. If anyone else has a particular game that they're having trouble with and they'd like to see me work, comment down below. I'm always happy to move games up in the order. I'm trying to work through all 400-ish officially released LSAT games, and I try and release one or two of these a week. So if that's interesting to you, like and subscribe, comment down below with any questions you have, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.